Hello and welcome once again to all of you. And before discussing today's lesson, what we are going to study today, okay, I would like to show you some of the pictures, very beautiful pictures like this one. It is of Switzerland and as you can see, it's a very beautiful picture. And most of us do have a bucket list that someday we may go to Switzerland for a tour and visit those beautiful places, isn't it? This is also one of the picture, the photographs of the Alps in Switzerland. And if we are to go to Switzerland, obviously we cannot use Indian currency over there, isn't it? Uh, Indian rupees like 100 rupees note or 200 rupees note or say 2000 rupees notes will not work there okay for example say if we are to go somewhere okay using taxi then we cannot pay the <clears throat> cab driver using Indian currency isn't it so we will either require a Swiss franc the picture of which you are uh, seeing over here or you will require euro okay in order to pay for the services or the goods that you will be purchasing there or using there in switzerland in the similar way this is a very famous statue which you will find in usa statue of liberty okay and most of us do have a dream of visiting usa at least once in a lifetime okay there is another place where hollywood movies are being made and most of us do want to visit those places also where Hollywood movies are being shot. Not only Hollywood or Statue of Liberty, but also Disneyland and all. So whenever we are in America, USA, then immediately when we reach there, we won't be able to use our Indian currency over there. We won't be able to use our Indian rupees over there. So what currency do we have to use when we are in USC? You, you all know that we have to use US dollars or which is given by the, this symbol. Okay, US dollar. So here in both the cases, whether you are visiting uh, Switzerland or you are visiting USA, then you see one thing that you will require the currency which is in circulation over there in that particular country in case of switzerland it may be swiss franc or it may be euros and in case of usa it may it is us dollar so where will you get those currency then because you live in india and even though if you are earning a lot of money you will be earning in terms of indian currency isn't it that is rupees so when you are visiting switzerland Okay, let's say you got the opportunity to visit Switzerland. Okay, finally, you are in Switzerland. Then immediately when you reach there or before reaching there, you have to convert Indian currency to the foreign currency. Okay, there is a certain rate at which you have to convert it. Like you all know that uh, sometimes uh, one dollar, one US dollar is equivalent to 70 rupees sometimes it is 65 rupees sometimes it is 75 rupees every day it is changing so over here today we will be discussing about that particular thing that is the exchange rate the foreign exchange rate so the topic next topic which we are going to discuss is foreign exchange rate okay and foreign exchange rate means here whenever we get the opportunity to travel to other countries to visit other countries then obviously we will require the currency of that particular country so at what rate will the exchange take place okay we will discuss entirely about that particular market system that is foreign exchange market system in the topic which we will we will be discussing today and in coming days okay so First of all, let me introduce myself. As you all know, I am Virat Chetri, PGT Economics, Kendri Vidyalai Bharpui. And today's topic for us is foreign exchange rate and we will be discussing its part one today. Okay. 
so without wasting much of time let us proceed with today's lesson before knowing about foreign exchange rate we need to know what does the term foreign exchange means foreign exchange simply means foreign currencies okay so foreign exchange refers to the foreign currencies or all currencies other than the domestic currency for example in case of india all the currencies other than indian rupee is known as foreign exchange for india okay <clears throat> all the currencies except rupees is known as foreign currencies for india okay like in case of india the examples are like us dollar which is written by dollar symbol british pound sterling and japanese yen euros etc so there are many foreign currencies which will be treated as foreign exchange so foreign exchange simply means all those currencies except all those foreign currencies except the very domestic currency other than indian rupees in case of india other than indian rupees us dollar euros pounds taka yen etc all are example of foreign exchange okay the next topic which we are going to discuss is foreign exchange reserve we have heard this term earlier also when we were discussing <clears throat> balance of payments isn't it now what do you mean by foreign exchange reserve foreign exchange reserve simply means the <clears throat> stock or volume of foreign exchange which are kept or held by the central bank of the country that is in case of india rbi will held okay rbi will store the foreign exchanges that is the foreign currencies will be stored with rbi or reserved with rbi and that particular stock is known as foreign exchange reserves okay so foreign exchange reserves refers to the volume or amount of foreign exchange held by the central bank that is in case of india central bank is rbi so rbi of the is monetary authority or central bank of the country next thing that we are going to discuss is that of foreign exchange market okay we know that when you are asked to define a term goods market and how will you answer it you will say that it is a market system where goods are bought and sold or commodities are bought and sold in the similar way when you are asked to define labor market then you will immediately say or write that labor market is a market form where laborers are or laborers are bought and sold labor are bought and sold in the similar way when you are asked to define money market then you will say that where various money forms are bought and sold so capital market where sales bonds etc are bought and sold okay so similarly there is foreign exchange market as the term itself says uh, as the term itself is foreign exchange market so how will we define foreign exchange market it is a market system okay it is a market system where foreign exchanges foreign currencies are bought and sold okay foreign currencies of various countries are bought and sold or the foreign exchanges are bought and sold so a market system where foreign currencies are bought and sold is known as foreign exchange market okay or foreign exchanges are exchanged or foreign currencies are exchanged is known as foreign exchange market after knowing all this definition we will now come to the term foreign exchange rate what actually is foreign exchange rate okay foreign exchange rate is nothing but the rate at which one currency is exchanged with other currencies okay foreign exchange rate is nothing but the rate at which one currency is exchanged with the other currency or in other words we can say that foreign exchange rate refers to the price of one currency in terms of other currency for example in case of goods market what do we do whenever we purchase a certain good let's say a cup of tea okay then certainly we have to pay certain price against that particular good okay in goods market goods are bought and sold in case of foreign exchange market 
since foreign currencies are being bought and sold so what happens here is goods will be replaced by foreign currencies now so whenever you are asking or demanding for a particular foreign currency let's say us dollar then obviously you have to make payment for it it has a certain price so that price will be in terms of the domestic currency that is indian rupees so how many indian rupees do we have to give in order to get one dollar that pricing is known as foreign exchange rate so foreign exchange rate is simply uh, defining one currency in terms of other currency okay uh, we will take an example it will help you to understand this term for example though the <clears throat> value of dollar is much higher in terms of rupee right now but for simplicity i have taken this value so don't go with the exact data this is just an example okay so for example let's say one dollar is equivalent to 50 rupees suppose say okay so in this case what we are doing is we are expressing dollar us dollar in terms of indian rupees for, for each one dollar how much of indian rupees are to be paid so here we are expressing dollars us dollar into in terms of rupees okay so when us dollar is expressed in terms of indian rupee now, on the other hand we can express the exchange rate in other way also that is we can express rupee in terms of us dollar here we have taken rupee one how much us dollar is equal to one rupee so we are trying to find out that so here from this calculation itself since one dollar is rupee 50 so rupee one will be one divided by 50 that is dollar 0 0.02 okay 0 0.02 dollar will be equivalent to one rupee okay so when we are expressing indian rupee in terms of us dollar so there are two ways of expressing the foreign exchange rate one way is to express the foreign currency in terms of domestic currency another way is to express domestic currency that is rupee in terms of us dollar so from here we can draw a conclusion that we can express foreign exchange rate in two ways one is by expressing the foreign currency in terms of domestic currency that is us dollar in terms of rupee that is the first case and on the other hand we can also express domestic currency in terms of foreign currency which we have done here in second example okay hope you have understood this now foreign exchange rate system are uh, there are three types of foreign exchange rate system which are which have prevailed or which are prevailing in our economy right now okay the first type of foreign exchange rate system is fixed or it is also known as pegged exchange rate system second type of exchange rate system is flexible or floating exchange rate system and third type of foreign exchange rate system is managed or dirty floating exchange rate system okay let us discuss this first first type of foreign exchange rate system that is fixed or pegged exchange rate system okay what do we mean by fixed or pegged exchange rate system it is an exchange rate system where the exchange rate at what amount of rupee is to be exchanged with one dollar how much of indian rupees will have to be exchanged with one us dollar that decision is taken by the government or by the monetary authority that is the central bank on behalf of the government so in case of fixed exchange rate system the exchange rates that is the foreign exchange rate is determined totally by the government or monetary authority on behalf of the government usually it is done by monetary authority in case of india is rbi so usually what happens the rbi in case of india or the monetary authority on behalf of the government will determine a certain exchange rate and that exchange rate will prevail in the market okay but a fixed exchange rate system occurred okay fixed exchange rate system was prevalent was in function only until 1973 okay after 1973 we have a new system 
foreign exchange rate system that is known as flexible foreign exchange rate system okay so let us understand about fixed exchange rate system by knowing brief history about fixed exchange rate system so fixed exchange rate system came into being in the year 1880 almost around this before this also so there were there used to be exchanges between one country with another country but there was no predefined or well defined exchange rate system so the fixed exchange rate system which was prevalent from the year 1880 to till the year 1914 when the first world war started that is the year in which the first world war started there used to be a foreign exchange rate system which is known as gold standard system okay what used to happen in this system every country used to express the currency in terms of or define the currency in terms of a fixed weight of a gold okay for example indian rupees will be defined in terms of fixed weight of gold in the similar way us dollar will also be defined or uh, will also be expressed in terms of definite weight of gold okay and whenever these two countries were to exchange keeping in mind the value of currency in terms of gold they used to exchange it okay and all the domestic currencies all the currencies which were prevailing at that time were easily convertible to gold okay let us understand this with the help of this example let's say 1 gram of gold the value of 1 gram of gold is equivalent to 1 dollar in usa okay similarly 1 gram of gold the same weight of gold can be purchased in india at 5 rupees or it has the value equivalent to 5 rupees in india okay then we can see from here that 1 gram of gold is equivalent to 1 dollar in usa and 1 gram of gold is equivalent to 5 rupees 5 indian rupees okay so from this two we can draw a conclusion that the exchange rate that should prevail is 1 dollar equals to 5 rupees from this two so this was the way in which the exchange rate used to take place in the gold standard system all the currencies were measured in terms of gold okay for example how much of gold can be purchased with particular currency and based on that the two currencies were exchanged keeping in mind how much of gold could be purchased with the same amount of money irrespective of whether it is a domestic currency or a foreign currency here we see that 1 gram of gold is being purchased by 1 dollar 1 gram of gold has uh, the value of 1 gram of gold is equal to 5 rupees so whenever these two countries want to exchange their uh, currencies then obviously india has to give 5 rupees against the 1 dollar given by the us so this was the gold standard exchange rate system and after this uh, from the year 1914 up till the end of almost the end of second world war that is up till 1945 44 there was no particular exchange rate system which was prevailing though fixed exchange rate system was prevailing at that time also but there was no standard measure, measurement or uh, there was no standard for an exchange rate system so in the year 1944 okay even before the completion of second world war or before the end of second world war there was a conference in bretton woods bretton woods is a place name in hampshire county which is in england right now okay so bretton woods at this place there was conference of 44 countries and they decided that from now onwards obviously until the end of second world war usa had had become one of the global economic power superpower so us dollar was usually acceptable everywhere in the world almost everywhere in the world so us dollar emerges as one of the uh, universally acceptable currency after the second world war 
so what happened was all the representatives who attended this Bretton Woods conference in the year 1944 they decided that from now onwards what we will do is we will define each country's currency we will define Indian rupees we will define let's say British pound we will define uh, Chinese yuan we will define Japanese yen we will define Bangladesh's taka in terms of US dollar we will what we will first do is we'll express our currency in terms of US dollar and US dollar in its turn can be converted to gold so there was no direct conversion in gold standard system what did we see we see that <clears throat> domestic currencies or any currencies were directly convertible to gold but in case of Bretton Woods system what happened is the currencies okay each country's currencies were convertible to US dollar and US dollar was convertible to gold okay so all the currencies were defined in terms of US dollar and US dollar was defined in terms of it was linked with the gold so the value decided was such that one ounce of gold one ounce means 28.35 grams approximately 28.35 grams of gold the value of gold was decided in such a way that an ounce of gold that is 28.35 grams of gold was equivalent to dollar 35 so if you have 35 dollar then you could purchase one ounce of gold okay but this system also could not work for a longer period of time it was so because in the year 1971 or around this time period it was found in USA that the gold reserves of USA was fastly depleting fastly reducing so the president the then president of USA Nixon president Nixon decided that we will come out of the Bretton Woods system and Bretton Woods system will no longer be in prevalence okay no longer will be in function but after 1971 also uh, there was one more agreement it is known as smithsonian agreement okay and according to that agreement it was decided that the price of gold in terms of dollar will be raised and instead of dollar 35 ounce of gold was given dollar 38 after 1971 but that too failed in the year 1973 and after 1973 we had a totally new exchange rate system which is known as flexible exchange rate system and which is still prevailing in today's world okay so let us understand how Bretton Woods system worked with this diagram it will be pretty much clear to you all all the currencies see British pound German mark Italian lira okay Japanese yen 2.80 pound with <coughs> At that time the value of pound was worth 2.8 dollar the value of German mark was such that the German mark worth 4.2 was equivalent to 1 dollar and Italian lira was such that 625 Italian lira was equal to 1 dollar and 360 Japanese one yen was equal to 1 dollar so in this way all these currencies were converted to US dollar and US dollar solely was convertible to gold and we see here the price was 35 an ounce dollar 35 an ounce okay now after 1973 a new foreign exchange rate system came up and that foreign exchange rate system is known as flexible foreign exchange rate system or flexible or floating foreign exchange rate system and in the system what happened was now the exchange rate was no longer determined by the government or the monetary authority in this exchange rate system exchange rate was totally determined by market forces of demand and supply of foreign exchange okay so according to the demand and supply for foreign exchange the foreign exchange rate is being determined this system is still prevailing in the world now if we are to compare 
fixed exchange rate system with flexible exchange rate system then we see that fixed exchange rate system is such an exchange rate system where the exchange rate is determined by monetary authority okay monetary authority or government and in case of flexible exchange rate system it is such type of exchange rate where the exchange exchange rate system where the exchange rate is determined by the market forces of demand and supply of foreign things so it is totally dependent on the market forces flexible exchange rate system but fixed exchange rate system is determined by government or the monetary authority and again second definition a second difference is from the definition itself exchange rate is completely determined by the government or monetary authority in case of fixed exchange rate flexible exchange rate system it is completely dependent on the market forces in case of fixed exchange rate system obviously since government is deciding so government can intervene any time but in case of flexible exchange rate system government cannot intervene so there is no government intervention in case of fixed exchange rate system since the exchange rate changes only after a long period of time so here the exchange rate is more or less stable okay like say if the exchange rate is rupee 4 equals to 1 dollar today then after 5 years also you you may see that the exchange rate is similar same that is 1 dollar equals to rupee 4 unless the government decides to change it but in case of flexible exchange rate system it is very dynamic it will not remain stable it keeps on changing like now in today's world we see that every day not every day within a day's time also like in the morning at 10 a.m the exchange rate is different and at the time of 5 p.m in the evening we see that the exchange rate is different so exchange rate is rapidly changing in case of flexible exchange rate system it won't remain same in three days time it won't remain same as it is today okay if the exchange rate for today is 74 rupees 74.31 rupees against one dollar then you will find that on monday after five days you'll see that the exchange rate has come down to 70 rupees per dollar so it is rapidly changing in case of flexible exchange rate system okay now what do we mean by managed floating or dirty floating exchange rate since you can see that two terms are uh, linked here managed floating floating means flexible flexibility is there but that flexibility will be managed by the government so let's see the definition it is mixture of both the types of exchange rate system which we have discussed till now okay that is both floating or flexible exchange rate and fixed exchange rate system so how will this operate actually here what happens is government will have a desired range of exchange rate okay desired range of exchange rate and if the exchange rate goes beyond that level okay within that range government allows the market forces to determine the exact exchange rate and if the government finds out or if the monetary authority finds out that the exchange rate is going beyond that desired range then the government will intervene and then they will bring that exchange rate back to that range okay let's see that with the help of example let's say the government wants the foreign exchange rate of india to lie between say rupee 65 per dollar to rupee 68 per dollar government is fine with whatever value it takes between 65 and 68 so between this range market will operate okay foreign exchange market forces that is demand forces and supply forces will operate and it will be allowed to operate freely okay what un, unless and until the exchange rate is between rupee 65 and rupee 68 okay if the value of one dollar falls below rupee 65 okay that means if the <clears throat> exchange rate goes below rupee 65 per dollar government will intervene and bring it back to this range okay on the other hand if the government okay, sees that the exchange rate is going beyond rupee 68 that is if they say exchange rate happens to be rupee 69 per dollar then the government will see that it has exceeded this range so it will bring back bring back the exchange rate back to 
this range that is let's say dollar one equals to rupee 68 or dollar one equals to rupee 67 however if the exchange rate is lying between this range then government will allow the forces of supply and demand okay to decide what is the exact exchange rate it may be rupee 65.2 it may be rupee 65.41 rupee 65.35 so it will be decided by the uh, market forces of demand and supply but the government will have a very close watch over whether the exchange rate is going beyond the range which the government desires the exchange rate to be within okay hope you have understood this <clears throat> now in case of fixed exchange rate the fixed exchange rate the changes that takes place in fixed exchange rate can take place in two ways that is either devaluation or revaluation now what do we mean by devaluation devaluation means the decrease or the reduction in the value of domestic currency it means that the value of foreign currency has increased against the value of domestic currency so the value of domestic currency will reduce okay and if that reduction is in the fixed exchange rate system and done by the government intentionally then it is known as devaluation reduction in the value of domestic currency by the government in fixed exchange rate system whenever the reduction in the value of domestic currency is occurring in fixed exchange rate system then it is known as devaluation okay let's see an example you will be able to understand it if say initial exchange rate is dollar one equals to rupee 60 then after devaluation what will happen dollar one will be equivalent to more than rupee 60 whatever value it can take i have given an example of rupee 65 for dollar so what is happening over here is the value of rupee has decreased reduced value of rupee has reduced means now you have to give more indian currency to purchase one unit of dollar okay fine it means that the value of indian currency has reduced and we have to give more unit of domestic currency against each unit of foreign currency that is for one dollar we have to give more rupees now in case of devaluation revaluation is the opposite of devaluation the value of domestic currency will increase by the government okay and in the fixed exchange rate system okay so devaluation and revaluation both occur in fixed exchange rate system and whenever the value of domestic currency increases in the fixed exchange rate system as done by the government then it is known as revaluation let's see an example for example initial exchange rate is rupee 60 again okay now the value of rupee has increased after revaluation so we have to give less rupees against each dollar so here we have treated rupee given 55 rupees against each dollar it may take any value below rupee 60 then it will be treated as revaluation in case of revaluation we have to give less amount of domestic currency against each unit of foreign currency that is less unit of indian rupee against each unit of us dollar okay in case of devaluation we have to give more unit of domestic currency against one unit of foreign currency that is we have to give more rupees against each dollar here that is in case of example of devaluation we see that 60 was the initial exchange rate and 65 was the new exchange rate after devaluation but in case of revaluation 60 was the initial exchange rate and it is now replaced by rupee 55 after revaluation that is the value of money as uh, indian currency has increased that is rupee has increased so we will be paying less rupee against each dollar on the other hand in case of flexible exchange rate system the similar concept is there the changes may occur in two ways that is depreciation and appreciation depreciation and appreciation has the similar meaning as that of devaluation and revaluation only with a slight change that is depreciation takes place in flexible exchange rate system 
so the value of domestic currency will decrease but it is not done by the government or monetary authority in fact it occurs because of the changes in the market forces that is demand and supply so the only difference is that in case of devaluation it is being done by the government in case of depreciation it is done by the market forces that is the only difference okay and devaluation occurs in fixed exchange rate system depreciation occurs in flexible exchange rate system other concept is same here also initial the example is same initial exchange rate is say dollar one equals to rupee 60 then after depreciation we have to give more rupees against each dollar so rupee 65 per dollar okay but here the decrease in the value of domestic currency is because of the changes in market forces and not done by the government and it occurs in case of flexible exchange rate system so devaluation fixed exchange rate system depreciation flexible exchange rate system you have to remember this okay on the other hand revaluation will be replaced by appreciation in case of flexible exchange rate system here also the definition is same but you have to keep in mind that in case of revaluation it was fixed exchange rate system and in case of appreciation it is flexible exchange rate system so here also the value of indian currency that is domestic currency will rise but this rise in the value of domestic currency is mainly because of the changes in the market forces and not because of the government intervention okay and it occurs in flexible exchange rate system rest the example is same as that of revaluation here also initial exchange rate is dollar one equals to rupee 60 now since the value of domestic currency that is indian rupee has increased we will be giving less rupee against each unit of foreign currency that is dollar one okay so the exchange rate after appreciation will be dollar one equals to rupee 55 okay earlier it was 60 now we are giving only rupee 55 against each dollar because the value of domestic currency has increased the value of rupee has increased okay so hope you have understood the concept of foreign exchange rate okay and you have also understood the concept of various type of foreign exchange rate that is fixed exchange rate system flexible exchange rate system and managed floating exchange rate system and you have also understood about the difference between fixed and flexible exchange rate system and finally you have also understood the concept of devaluation and revaluation in case of fixed exchange rate system and depreciation and appreciation in case of flexible exchange rate system we will further continue with this chapter that is foreign exchange rate in our next lecture for now i would like to take a leave so thank you thank you very much for patiently listening to me okay hope to catch you later with another lesson in the same chapter thank you very much stay safe and stay at home keep studying thank you thank you very much